While the local phone network was partially crippled and long distance lines jammed, the internet, which was designed to survive the unpleasant effects of Soviet missiles, seemed to be working. Millions who received a busy signal trying to call New York City would have no difficulty reaching a local internet service provider. In spite of the fact that many lower Manhattan residents did not have access to the internet because of damage to phone and data lines locally, email was beginning to fill a crucial information void. When information about people missing in the World Trade Center was still impossible to obtain, there remained countless New Yorkers desperate to tell a friend or loved one that they were okay. And the residents of Battery Park City, across the street from the World Trade Center, would have lots of worried friends. I evacuated south into the debris cloud. Once I got to Staten Island, I was able to get through to one friend on my cell who immediately circulated email that I was OK. One friend of mine sent me a list of people she had heard from and asked if I could possibly share that list around and spread the word about who was OK. So I took those names and compiled them into a list. I figured it would be easiest uh, for everybody to look at a website rather than try to keep up with a, a lot of emails. This is the very first version of the website that I put up. Uh, I've heard from or about the following people with a list of about 15 names. It's a very simple list, nothing automatic about it. That went up about 11.30 in the morning on the 11th. When government officials were unable to provide information about the missing, a simple website constructed by a science fiction writer would take on a phenomenal life of its own. When I would go in to watch the television, I'd feel very helpless. Um, and when I was at the computer, I felt like I was actually doing something to help. Hey, what are you fucking to the 